Hey everyone, welcome back to another very exciting Unity VFX slash particle system tutorial and today we're going to be working on this cool electric weapon effect with these bloody trails. So for this I'm going to be using Ultimate VFX for the particles and for the sword itself I'm going to be using Elven Sword by Mana Station. You can actually get the whole pack apparently for free with a bunch of other weapons in it so definitely check that out if you want to follow along with this exact same weapon. And you can see it's fully dynamic and ready to use in a game so if I for example grab the sword and you can example like a uh, character holding it. You could swing it around, leave all these wispy trails behind. You can easily modify the effect. It's modular, so if you only want certain parts of it enabled, or if you want to modify it to have, uh, for example, more electricity, or actually make these leave behind a full trail of blood rather than kind of wisps, you can easily do that, you know, disable parts of it, use whatever you want, and leave behind the other parts. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started. So the first thing I'll do after disabling the original effect is create a new folder particle system. Basically, everything's going to go inside this one, uh, just so we can easily preview things. This particle system itself is not going to do anything, so I'll disable all of the modules and then create a new particle system inside of it. So since the main part of the sword is the electricity, I'll work on that first. I'll call this electricity and if I just hit restart, you can see what this looks like. It's just the default stuff right now, nothing fancy. The shape, I'm going to change it into a sphere and I'm going to make this, since this is the electricity, it's going to be coming out the blade of the sword. I'm going to make this about uh, 0.25 maybe 0.125. You can see it's kind of flattened out now. And I'm going to move it up a little bit maybe to one unit, one meter. Oh, and this sword is actually, by the way, scaled to two meters. So if you're following these values, that's what this assumes. But anyways, yeah, so this is now one up here. And that fits, I think, the blade pretty well. So nothing more fancy to do there. So now I'll just go to the trails module, enable that. It's going to look all weird. And I'm going to set the trails material to the droplet from Ultimate VFX. So you can see what that looks like. I'm going to disable the render mode for the regular particle just so only the trail shows and let's see I'll set the speed to zero for now or maybe just one and this electric effect is really made by the noise so I'm gonna set the noise to be random between two constants after enabling the module and maybe like five and eight and let's turn the start size down just so I can see it better and five eight two and ten and now you can see it kind of looks like electricity I also want to take the lifetime way, way down, so like 0.5 and 0.8, so random between two constants, and I can see it looks like electricity. And then what I can do is enable the limit velocity over lifetime module, maybe turn this up to like 0.5, so it really stays close to the blade. And I can also set this to zero in that way, it smooths out a bit and doesn't look all weird and funky. And let's see, I can make the start size to be random between two constants, 0 0.05 and 1, maybe even bigger than that, maybe this and this. Let's set this to random between two colors so we can have something like uh, blue and green maybe so it also has some start speed so random two constants two and five you can see that's really starting to take shape still seems like something's a little bit off and i think that might be the size over lifetime so if you go to the size over lifetime module you have this curve here just add a key somewhere here clamp dotto so it flattens out and then drag the two ends down uh, make sure this tangent faces up so it curves it's not concave it's convex and there you go that's looking pretty good we can also change the radius thickness so it only comes out the outside of the sword. So if we take this out, it, it fills the entire volume. If we take this down to zero, it only comes out off the edges, which is also maybe something you want. And I'm going to set this actually 0.75 so it's a bit tighter. And I think that looks pretty good for lightning or uh, the electricity around the sword. Next thing I'll do is enable the lights module because in the original, you could actually see there were some lights behind it. So if I disable this and you check out the original, you can see it actually lights the sword up. And you could light uh, elements around the sword as well. So if you moved it around the environment, and I think that would look really cool so let's enable that so for the lights module it needs a template now ultimate vfx comes with some templates but in case you're following along and just want to know how to do this you could easily just create a new point light in the scene like this so light point light and then drag it as a prefab just leave the default settings and then you can drag that prefab in to this as a template like so in this case i'm not going to do that i'm going to use the one with ultimate vfx and you can delete the one in the scene after that uh but yeah i'm just going to use the one in ultimate vfx so it's just cmn common light ns no shadows you can also have shadows enabled if you want it on the lights uh the light prefab itself but in that case you might see a huge performance impact and generally when you do this and you have a lot of lights in the scene you want to use deferred rendering on the camera just so you can actually have that supported so let's turn the ratio up to one which means there will be a light for every single particle you can turn that down but with about five to six particles firing off in rapid succession it's not a big deal you can inherit a bunch of things maybe set this to like two maybe whatever you think is good i think that looks fine 
And the next thing we'll work on with the electricity is the sparks. So for the sparks, we use a sub emitter. So we can enable the sub emitter module, add a new particle system by hitting that little plus. We'll also hit it again right here to add a new one. And these will be our lens flares that'll be emitted when the particles are born. So for both of these, I'll go ahead and inherit the color. So I'll disable the lens flares for now so we can focus on the sparks. I'll name this sparks and I'll name this uh, disabled one right now. Lens flares. And for the sparks, I'll go ahead and disable looping and open up emission, set that to zero because we want them emitting anywhere from let's say five to maybe 15 particles every time one of those lightning streaks is born. We can leave the shape as is and we can turn down the star size way, way down and maybe set the renderer to use the droplet additive particle material, same as before, and set the render mode to stretch billboards so that they face in the direction they're gonna be coming out of. Right now, since they're not moving, you won't see them, but if we turn the start speed up, you can see what that looks like. So let's turn the start speed to like one and two, and we can set the gravity to 0.75, so you can see what that looks like now. Maybe turn the start size to be random between two constants, so 0 0.05 and maybe one, that looks okay. And I can enable velocity over lifetime and set them to maybe go upwards in world space. So the reason I wanna do it in world space is so that when we rotate the sword, they don't go along the, the axis of the sword, but rather, you know, kind of bounce up. So we can set that to like two or four even, whatever looks good, I guess. We can change their start lifetime to be maybe 0 0.5 and two or 1.5. Maybe 10, 5, 10. So you can just keep messing with that till it uh, kind of looks okay. I don't really like to do too much tweaking when I'm making tutorials because it can be a huge time sink. But I guess something like that isn't too bad. So you can see if I actually play this and move the sword around. So if I rotate it, right? They're still falling down, but they're, they're doing this weird thing. So for that, what I need to do is actually maybe stop it set it to simulate in world space, and that way when I move the sword around, they actually fall off and don't just follow me. So they kind of do this, and I think that looks better. Right, so that's looking pretty cool. So next we'll work on the lens flares. So let's restart this. Now we only want one lens flare being emitted for every electric uh, particle. So let's set the rate over lifetime to zero and set this to one. And then we can use the lens flare material additive with a soft particle value of one from Ultimate VFX. And we can actually randomize the, the start size and turn the lifetime down. Maybe even randomize that a little bit or just turn it down, way down. And for this, we definitely want it to be colored over lifetime. So we want it to quickly fade in, quickly fade out. So for this, we'll have, we'll just put a new keyframe right there, keep this maximum. And then on the two ends, just turn down the opacity. That way it kind of quickly fades in and out. We can even have it quickly kind of sizing in and out. So we can just add a new key, do the same thing as we did before for the electricity. So clamped auto, turn these down, make the tangent face up and something like that. So that's, that's not too bad. And we can also just make it a little bit less obvious. Just to five, no, two five, I think it's fine. So you can make it as bright as you want or as uh, not as obvious. Depends how flashy you want this to be, I guess. You know, you can even make this bigger. I think that's fine. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, right now the electricity doesn't leave a trail behind it like it did in the original effect. So if I move this around, right, we want it to leave a trail. So the trick to that is actually to go to the trails, enable world space, but keep making sure if the particles that the trails emit off of remain in local space. That way they follow the sword, but the trails are emitted in world space. And that way, if I swing the sword, it leaves this trail and you can easily, you know, pump this number up to like a ridiculous amount if you wanted to. That's crazy. I don't think you should use that in a game, but you know, you can if you want to. So let's restart this. Maybe set this to like 25 even or 15. That looks fine. And for the sparks, you can always turn it down if, uh, you know, they're a bit too over the top. And actually for the sparks, one thing I forgot to do is actually have them kind of fade in and out by, by their size. So again, same thing, random key, just put it somewhere to there, tangents up. And one way you can start saving time and not having to do this over and over again is to just uh, save this, save this curve. So to save the curve, all you have to do is go here and hit new. So once you have that, you can just hit like a preset and it'll automatically do it for you. And that I think looks much better. So, I mean, we can even make this particles a bit bigger now. Okay, so the next thing we'll work on is the glowing smoke. So the glowing smoke is the, the smoke at the hilt that you see right here. So if I restart it, you can see we're going to be working on that next. So to do that, we'll create a new particle system again, and we'll call it glowing smoke. And we'll move this particle system once we play it. Let me just flatten the perspective and move this to around this the end of the hilt right there and then let's see we'll use the smoke 3 texture from ultimate vfx so we'll use the anim additive 
variation. Now, I talked about uh, animation blending, texture sheet animation blending in another tutorial, and that was just to kind of prepare you for what I was going to do here. So I have custom shaders that allow animated blended additive shaders in Ultimate VFX. If it doesn't exist in the copy you have, because I might have added it later, simply take this, Control D, right? It'll duplicate it. And once it does, you can name it to Anim Add and then change the particle to use the Anim Additive Shader instead. That's all. That's the only difference, really. So I'm going to get rid of that. And so that's been assigned. I'm going to enable Texture Sheet Animation. It's 8 by 8 so I'm going to put 8x, 8y. You can see what that looks like. I need to fix the custom vertex streams, so enable custom vertex streams. Add UV2, add Anim Blended, so that way you can see it smoothly blends in the, the frames of the Texture Sheet Animation. And I can, of course, make this bigger at the start speed to like 0 0.01 because we barely want them moving anyways. Maybe turn this down. Shape, turn that to a sphere and turn it way down. The radius, change the emission to maybe like 2 or something. And right now, you know, it's all uniform looking. That should look kind of cool on itself. And what I'll do is I'll enable random between two constants for the rotation. Set this to 360 and that way we have more variation. I can also change up the start lifetime to be random between two constants and that way it looks like that and then I can color it simply to be something like you know, bluish like so again you can tweak that as you want it to start size maybe even vary that a little bit to like 1.5 and 2 and I think that looks pretty good so the glowing smoke is done we'll work on the bloody smoke that you saw in the original which is this right here. So for this, because it uses a lot of the same stuff that the glowing smoke uses, we'll just duplicate glowing smoke, control D, and we'll find uh, smoke burst anim alpha. So we're going to use alpha blending this time, not additive. And if we hit reset on that, you can see what that looks like. So that's actually really cool looking on its own, isn't it? So you can set that to whatever color you want. We want it to be bloody, so we'll set it to a dark red, like so. And I think even on its own, that looks pretty good. So we'll leave that as is and rename it to blood smoke, I guess. And now we want the blood smoke that rises and kind of goes upwards like that. So we'll duplicate this one. Let's see, we can enable force over lifetime in local space because this time, no matter which way we rotate it, we want it to go down the axis of the sword. So we'll do it that way and turn the Y up. So it starts rising like so. And we can also maybe enable the size over lifetime module. And this time we're gonna make a custom curve that we haven't saved a preset for. So something like maybe this. So it already starts off a little bit big but it maybe kind of controls its size near the end a little bit, like that. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's probably fine. And we can turn the opacity down as well. Or we can turn the opacity up and just make it darker. So again, you can tweak it however you want. Uh, maybe set this to 0.5, emit more particles. And we can also change the sorting fudge so it appears behind the additive stuff. So if we turn this up to maybe like two, it'll show up behind the additive particles and that way it won't get in the way and look all weird. That looks pretty good, right? So we can call this blood smoke rising. And one thing that I want to do for all three of these is actually so I can select all three. Um, I don't think I have color over lifetime enabled. So enable color over lifetime for all three and then, you know, put a put a keyframe somewhere there. Make sure alpha is at maximum and then turn it down, turn it down, and then put another keyframe here. And this will just control its kind of fade off. So if I do it like here, you can see it fades off really quickly or you can give it a more harsh fade off by moving this along and tweaking this. So about, here's pretty good, I think. And yeah, that looks nice. And the last thing that, uh, the last two things, I guess, that are left are the hilt embers and the bloody trail. So we'll, we'll work on the hilt embers. All that is, is just a few particles coming off the, the hilt right there. It's not really a big deal, but uh, could look nice. So we'll add those in. So these are simply just new particle system. We'll again, move it so it's centered somewhere there and choose point additive one from ultimate vfx so point add one good and we'll turn the size way down something like point zero five and point one maybe or even two i guess and set the shape to be a sphere so it looks like that turn the radius down and for now let's see start lifetime maybe one and two or maybe even less than that, 0.5 and 0 0.025 or 0.25. And we can have them slow down over time by enabling limit velocity over lifetime. Turn this value up. Turn this down like so. And have them size over lifetime. So we, we'll just use the saved curve that we have from before. Something like that. Make it orangish. Maybe make them smaller too. You can turn up the 
emission rate or turn it down to make it a bit more subtle. Now these are constantly clipping between the other particles. So if we want to specifically define some sorting fudge, we can do that. Let's set it to like 0.1. So it appears if I if I make it negative one, it'll appear before other things. If I make it positive something, it'll appear behind things. So depending on which way you want to go, I think I'll just leave it at like four or something. So it appears behind. And finally, the last element are the wispy trails. So the wispy trails are these trails right here. And you can see if I move them around, they kind of leave this ghostly effect. If I were to sh change this to local, looks really cool, right? So that's what we'll work on next. So we'll just put these back where they were. And so again, this one won't be using any of these settings. And this one's going to be teaching you how to, I guess, use uh, mesh renderers for particle systems as emitters. So let's hit a new particle system. I forgot to name this. We'll call this uh, Hilt Embers. And we'll call this one Bloody Trails. And for this one, I actually got a little bit lazy, but I straight up used the default particle, particle material, and it uses the alpha pre-multiply shader, which is exactly what we want. It simulates blood really well, so we just have to set it to a kind of darkish red value like that. And so we can, because we don't actually want any of the main particles, we only want the trails, we can disable the render mode, enable trails, that'll show us the trail material, and we can again use the default particle for the trails. So we get this. We can turn the opacity down a little bit. And for the emission, what we can do is set this to mesh and actually use the sword and the triangles of the sword. So if we reset that, maybe turn up the particle count to like 500, turn down the start lifetime to maybe 1.5 and 2. Set the trails minimum vertex distance to maybe 0.1. Enable noise, 0.5, 1, and 0.5. The size definitely needs to be turned down. Random between two constants, 0.2 and 0.25. We get this going on. It still looks kind of weird. So right now, actually, what you'll notice is that the, the sword that it's uh, emitting out of is very small. And remember, again, at the beginning, I said that my sword was scaled up to 2. So this also actually needs to be scaled up to 2. So it actually has the same emitter size. So we can put this back where it was. OK, so let's enable the size over lifetime and reuse that same preset from before. And we can also enable the force over lifetime and have it go up in world space. So it constantly kind of floats up all ethereal like. We can set this to use world space. That way we kind of leave this trail behind. Set the start speed to be exactly zero. And there you go. So you got your trails left like that. And then you can set the color over lifetime to be something like between blue or greenish, light blue and maybe more blue here, like that. And so this creates a very, pretty strange looking effect. So if you wanted to make it a bit more visible or white, you can do it this way, right? So, or if you want it to be more red, you can just move this back to the red. For this, I'll make it more red by moving this up here and maybe going here, kind of edging this towards white. And that way, if you wanted to change the colors later, you could easily do that. Right, so if you want it to be blue, you can just turn this here. And if you want it to be more red, you can easily turn this like so. And if you want it to be kind of mixed between the two, you can just move this slider along. That's fine. You can actually just turn this way down because I don't need that many particles, I just realized. And that looks pretty good. So I think that's a not too bad recreation of the original. Again, it's kind of going back and forth between these two. So we can fix that by going to the sorting fudge. So if we go to billboard, you have to have it enabled. I think that's something Unity should fix actually on the editor because should probably always be able to see this, but yeah, we can turn this to 8, so it goes way behind the other particle systems, and then set this back to none. And finally, one other thing, I guess, is select all of these and enable pre-warm, so that way they don't start uh, animating in once you start actually playing the scene, but they're already ready to go, because I think that just looks better, and you can save this as a prefab just by dragging into your hierarchy. So I think that about wraps it up for this tutorial. We can uh, play around with this sword, uh, move it around, you can attach it to a character's hands, and... If they swing it, you know, you'll see all these cool effects. So another thing you can do is actually maybe turn down the electricity initially to maybe 10 and then put something like 5 over here over distance. So what will happen is when you actually swing the sword, more particles will be emitted. But anyways, I think that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you think. Share this video with your friends. Comment. Subscribe. And uh, if you have ideas for other weapon effects, let me know in the comments, and I'll definitely check them out. Bye.